And we thank you for your opening statement. We'll now proceed with questions under the five-minute rule, and I'll begin by recognizing myself for five minutes. Uh, you, in fact, uh, uh, addressed uh, in your remarks my first question, which deals with the uh, troubling uh, uh, information that was received by the FBI and uh, other agencies of the government prior to the Boston Marathon bombing, but uh, it does not appear that all of the information was received uh, by all of the <clears throat> pertinent parties, particularly the FBI, which had conducted an investigation prior to Tamerlan Sarnayev's uh, trip to Russia, but not after. And uh, we would uh, like to continue to work with you and know what the department is doing uh, to uh, adopt procedures for handling hits in relevant databases and making sure that the information between agencies is improved. Well, we certainly want to work with you in that regard. Uh, there is an ongoing Inspector General investigation, as you know, as to uh, how information was or was not shared in the context that you have uh, described. I think that generally the FBI did a very good job uh, in acquiring information to the extent that it could. Uh, I'm not at all certain that all of the responses or all the requests that were made to a foreign country uh, by the FBI were replied to in an adequate manner, and I think that is at least one of the problems that we have. But this is a, this is a matter that is ongoing um, uh, in, by the IGs. In 2010, and this relates to the aftermath of the arrest of uh, Jokar Sarnayev, in 2010 you indicated strong support for modifying the criminal rules to ensure that investigators could obtain critical intelligence from terrorism suspects. Specifically, you said in 2010, we're now dealing with international terrorists, and I think that we have to think about perhaps modifying the rules that interrogators have and somehow coming up with something that is flexible and is more consistent with the threat that we now face. Can you articulate how the department would propose fixing the relevant rules, and would you be willing to work with members of the committee to ensure that our criminal rules are up to the task of handling terrorism questions, particularly this issue of how long the FBI or other law enforcement can question somebody about imminent threats. There is a Supreme Court case recognizing that, but it collides with another Supreme Court case saying you have to be uh, presented uh, within 48 hours. And uh, obviously that uh, caused some consternation about the completion of the questioning by the FBI about future uh, events, other conspirators, and the location of, of bombs and other equipment related to this terrorist attack. Yeah, um, I think you're right, Mr. Chairman. There is a tension between the public safety exception um, as defined in the Quarles case and Rule 5, the crim Rules of Criminal Procedure. Um, there was a proposal that uh, we floated out there uh, that I talked about. Um, and what I would prefer to do would be uh, to work with members of Congress who are interested perhaps in looking at um, the world as we see it now. Um, the Quarles case dealt with somebody who was asked, where's the gun? The reality is, as we deal with terrorist suspects, there are much more broad questions that we need to ask, much more detailed information that we need to know. Who else was involved in this matter? Are there other uh, explosive devices that we need to know about? Are there other threats that are going to happen, not only today, but perhaps in the next two or, or, or three days? And so it seems to me that the need for an extensive quarrels um, public safety exception question period would be appropriate. I think that this would require um, interaction between the executive and legislative branches to come up with something that would pass constitutional muster. It was recently reported by the Justice Department, uh, or reported that the Justice Department obtained two months of telerecords of more than 20 reporters and editors with the Associated Press, including both work and personal phone lines. There's been a lot of criticism raised about the scope of this investigation, including why the department needed to subpoena records for 20 people over a lengthy two-month period. Why uh, was such a broad scope approved? Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of criticism. In fact, the head of the RNC called for my resignation um, in spite of the fact that I was not the person who was involved in that decision. Um, but uh, be that as it may. Uh, I was recused in that matter, uh, as I described, I guess, in a press conference that I held yesterday. The decision to um, 
issue this subpoena was made by the people who are presently involved in the case. The matter is being supervised by the Deputy Attorney General. I am not familiar with the reasons why the subpoena was constructed in the way that it was, because I'm simply not a part of the case. It's my understanding that one of the requirements before compelling process from a media outlet is to give the outlet notice. Do you know why that was not done? There are exceptions to that rule. I do not know, however, that with regard to this particular case, why that was or was not done. I simply don't have a factual basis to answer that question. And it's also been reported that the Associated Press refrained from releasing this story for a week until the Department confirmed that doing so would not jeopardize national security interests. That indicates that the AP was amenable to working with you on this matter. If that is the case, why was it necessary to subpoena the telephone records? Did you seek the AP's assistance in the first place? And if not, why not? Again, Mr. Chairman, I don't know what happened there about with the interaction between the AP and the Justice Department. I was recused from the case. I take it that you or others in the Justice Department will be forthcoming with those answers, those questions, as you explore why this was handled, what appears to be contrary to the law and standard procedure. Well, again, there are exceptions to some of the rules that you pointed out. And I have faith in the people who actually were responsible for this case, that they were aware of the rules and that they followed them. But I don't have a factual basis to answer the questions that you have asked because I was recused. I don't know what has happened in this matter. Thank you very much. My time is up. Thank you. Thank you.